the league end up in exactly the same spot as Adam mentioned years ago with Ray Rice and looking like they're toothless and didn't know anything? Yeah, that's a great question. It's a great question as to why TMZ is able to get a hold of this kind of evidence. And the NFL is always left, you know, in a reactionary type of uh, situation to where then they're, gonna, they're having to play catch up and then they're having to make drastic moves in order to maintain their credibility. That's a tough situation to always be in. You didn't think that this would ever happen again in this way, but it almost seems like a carbon copy again, as Adam alluded to, of the Ray Rice situation. And that's unfortunate because. Again, now, look, the more this happens, the more the NFL's credibility comes into question, the more people say, look, if TMZ can get it, you can get it. And if you care enough about it, you'll do whatever is necessary to get it. Obviously, TMZ did. Why can't you? Those are questions that I can't answer, Adam can't answer. Those are questions for the league offense and for the people who are responsible for getting that kind of information. So they're going to have questions to answer once again. So you have the cream hunt thing. Uh, you've got Reuben Foster here the same week in the NFL. Uh, what does this do to the image of the league as they try to press on from this just these kind of stories, and yet here they are again, two of them, and very prominent? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, for the league, in, in this situation in particular, about not being able to get a hold of evidence, it's a bad look. Again, that's a question for them to answer because you know what it does to their image. It takes another hit. The credibility takes another hit. It's something that we talked about in previous cases. Credibility. Are you out ahead of things like this? Are you being proactive? Or are you being reactionary? That's going to, again, those are going to be questions for the appropriate people to answer. Um, this is something that, look, I, I, I can't speak for the league overall. I can, I can say this with knowing the people in Kansas City, but how swiftly they acted today, and if you're going to take them at their word that they did not know the severity of what had happened and, they, and that Kareem did was not fully truthful with them, look, for you to cut a 22-year-old running back, in his prime, a Pro Bowl player, a guy who, let's let's just put it bluntly, a guy who really does have a tremendous effect on the fortunes of your franchise in terms of the wins and losses. For you to cut him on a Friday night after something like this leads you to believe that they're not messing around in Kansas City, and, you know, as far as this particular case, and, it, and they're trying to do the right thing here in this particular situation. So, I mean, obviously they're, they're trying to do the right things, some teams are trying to do the right things. I know there are many people who feel very strongly about this kind of situation and would act very swiftly as well, the same way that Kansas City did today. And you're, you're hoping that more and more teams and more and more places will react that way in situations like this because I've gone on the record right, right from the beginning, all the way back to the Ray Rice situation. It's something that's just... It just can't be tolerated. It's a very simple situation. These aren't mistakes that people make. These are choices that people make. You make a choice to react in a situation like that, and I don't care about the whole who provoked who, who said what, who did what. You always have a choice to walk away. You always have a choice to walk away, and players are going to have to understand that if they want to preserve their careers and preserve their chances, or rather a reasonable chance at making a living playing professional football or playing prof professional sports overall. And it's a shame to see this kind of thing continue to come up over and over and over again where the evidence is out there and, you know, the examples are out there as to how not to handle these kind of situations and how not to get caught up in these situations. And with Kareem Hunt, look, I spoke at the University of Toledo this summer. I spoke to their football team. I know Jason Candle, their head coach. I know how proud they were of Kareem Hunt. I know what Kareem Hunt's reputation was coming into the league. This was a kid who was self-made, a kid who had worked very hard to get to where he was, a kid who I was, who I was trumpeting in his, his talents. And then when Andy Reid put him in there and he became a Pro Bowl type of player his rookie season, I was very proud of. So you can imagine, look, and I have nothing to do with the Kansas City Chiefs. I have no dog in this fight. You can imagine the kind of disappointment and heartbreak that these guys feel when I know the kind of time that they put into researching these kids, trying to develop these kids and trying to turn them into great pros and helping them make a great living, just to force their hand and have to, and have to like cut their career short or cut their time with that team short and possibly throw their entire life away. That, that is a very, very tough thing, and um, it, it really is a shame. It's a shame, and I hope at some point in time 